Hi, it's Ryan. Please excuse my voice. I have a little cold. Um, I'm about to start in my middle school How to Hang Out program, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in it, but I also wanted to talk to you about what most, most social skills groups get wrong. Because one of the number one things parents say to me when they call is, my son attended a social skills group and he either hated it or you know he was considered the role model for the group or we didn't really find it helpful. And there's a lot of reasons for this um, that I want to kind of explain, but I'm not going to get into all of them. So what we're going to do in the middle school How to Hang Out program today is that Number one, um, we're going to learn an executive function strategy to help us make pancakes. I'm not going to call it an executive functioning strategy, but you know we're going to do that. We're going to talk about um, you know initial social anxiety when we're around um, new guys, and you know how people have thoughts about us the first time we meet them, and what first impressions mean, and how we can influence others' thoughts about us based on what we say and what we do. Because a lot of the kids I work with, um, if they struggle socially, when they're in a new social situation with kids, they have a propensity to act silly um, or act in ways that you know would give other kids maybe uncomfortable thoughts, even though they're trying to be funny and show off. Um, because of their discomfort. So really what I always do during the first group is acknowledge that it's okay to feel uncomfortable when you're in a new social situation with other guys. And everybody experiences that. And you know, and I kind of explain to them the anxiety curve that our anxiety or discomfort goes up, you know, and then it comes back down and we're good. So we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about how guys form friendships. So talking about what's the difference between school friends and friends. School friends being somebody you sit at lunch with, um, you know, or you talk to on the bus, versus a friend is somebody who you intentionally see outside of school. So a lot of the guys I work with, they have trouble going from school friends to friends, both because that requires some social cognitive skills like showing an interest in others, but it also requires what we call social executive functioning. So understanding how do I ask somebody else to hang out? You know, how do I structure a hanging out time? Um, because that's really challenging for a lot of kids. And a lot of kids have told me, you know, that they feel pressure. They don't want to invite somebody over because it feels like too much pressure. They feel like I'm going to have to entertain them and I don't know how to do that. And that's really an executive functioning issue when it comes down to it. And the other thing we're going to do today is we're going to play a Monopoly Fortnite, which, which I just got. So um, that's a plan for today, or what I call the group plan, meaning this is what everybody's doing and you're expected to be going along with the group plan, you know, if you want to be part of a group. The idea being that when we, if we want to be part of a group, what the group is doing or what the group wants is more important than what you want at that time. And really what that's about is teaching cognitive flexibility, but also how to be part of a group. So one of the things I want to um, share with you is that with a lot of social skills groups, what I find is that people teach kids, you know, how to, you know, ask somebody to, you know, hang out. So they work on maybe for weeks saying, okay, we'll invite this kid over, you know, or this is how you're going to ask him to come over. But one of the things that they really miss the boat with is they don't teach them how to, number one, be relatable to their same age, same gender peers, and number two, how to appropriately show an interest in others. So. One of the things of why I really got into, you know, specifically teaching social skills to boys was I found a lot, you know, the vast majority of people, I'd say 95% of people who teach social skills are women. And really for, you know, a lot of, I mean, women can learn this, but if you weren't part of a male peer group, uh, growing up, then how do you really know how to kind of navigate that? So that's why I really kind of focused on teaching boys because what I want to teach is, you know, how do you um, show an interest in others in a way that's expected for guys your age, you know, and how do you make yourself relatable in a way that's expected for guys your age? And one of the things that I see a lot with social skills groups is they teach kids things like, you know, to say, you know, what are your interests and what are your hobbies? Boys don't talk like that, you know, and it's really kind of breaking a hidden rule of what I call the male male social communication. You know, or they teach kids to, you know, they work on for weeks, like I was saying, asking somebody to hang out. Well, what happens if you ask somebody to hang out, but you never really showed an interest in them before that? Last year, I was at a conference and a mom came up to me and said, oh, my son's psychologist has been working with him on, you know, asking some other boys to come over. And any boy he's asked has said no. And I said, of course they've said no, because he's never shown any interest in them whatsoever. So why would they say yes to coming over for a play date when your son has never shown interest in them? And I said, you know, with all due respect, his psychologist is missing the boat of what she should be teaching, okay? Because at the end of the day, what makes us endearing to others is being relatable and showing an interest in others, okay? And being able to be flexible to think about others, um, and that's perspective taking.
thinking, you know, so thinking about others' thoughts and feelings and thinking about how you come across to others. And the last thing I want to say is that improving, you know, social thinking skills is a very slow process. This does not happen overnight, and I find a lot of parents get very impatient with this, but I'll leave you with this, you know, if you haven't learned social information intuitively from a young age, and let's say you're 12, you know, we can't teach you in three months what you haven't learned in 12 years. When this is done correctly, what we do is we go back and teach these skills that haven't developed intuitively. Right? And really that's what my How to Hang Out program is about, is we really focus on learning how to be part of a group and thinking about others' thoughts and feelings, but doing it in a way that's natural and organic, which is why we're making pancakes today and why we're playing Monopoly Fortnite. So uh, that's it. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below and I will speak to you soon. Have a great day. Take care.